We are sailing 175 miles from Roroya to Fakarava and the Tuamotus, historically known as the Dangerous Archipelago. But first, we have to navigate the balmy-filled lagoon. The challenge of sailing between atolls is you have to traverse each pass at slack tide, so our timing needs to be precise, otherwise we risk running into racing currents and up to 9-foot standing waves. Fortunately, we're sailing alongside Delos, and given their experience, we feel our plan has been validated. Though, a hiccup with our spinnaker leaves us moving slower than expected. Right now, we are making our way through the Roroya Atoll. We weighed anchor this morning, and my job up front here is to keep an eye out for bombings because there are a lot of them. They are not marked on the chart. Fortunately, right now, the sun is behind us, so we can see them pretty well, but still, you know, always good to have a lookout person up front. And we're following a track. For some reason our track isn't showing up on BNG. I'm sure it's just a setting, but we have the track that was given to us for the weigh in. And so, yeah, we we'll probably have another 30 minutes or so until we're at the house. The audio wasn't captured on one of our cameras. Not sure what happened. One there, one there and one up there. All right, we are almost at the pass. There's another boat just appro approaching the pass. It looks like they'll go through before us. The tide is supposed to be slack somewhere around 10, 15 or so. Um, and I believe it's about quarter to ten, so we're a bit early, uh, but I think we'll be fine. I just saw another boat go through far up ahead of us, so I think we're good. The boat coming into the lagoon made it through just fine. You can see the swell beginning here. The chop was building up and it was hard for me to hold the camera steady. And now it was quite a bouncy ride, but with our two 80 horsepower engines, we could power through. Ironically enough, there was a small fishing boat off to starboard. We made it through the pass and turned into the wind to hoist the main. Once the sail was up, I resumed our course and Fabio prepped to unfurl the screecher. Today we are sailing 173 miles plus, I guess, whatever it was to get across the atoll. And we're going from Rairoa to Fakarava. Uh, Conditions are great. Forecast was for like, I don't know, 13 knot winds or so, but right now we've got 19 from just kind of off our stern, broad reach with the main and the screecher. And fun little tidbit, Delos is behind us. They're gonna be our buddy boat for this passage. And yeah, it should be a good trip. It's gonna take us anywhere from like 21 to 25 hours, I think. And again, sailing between the atolls is a bit tricky because you also have to consider the tides. We're trying to enter Fakarava slack tide. I believe the slack tide uh, there is at 2 p.m. tomorrow. We want to give ourselves some cushion time. So if we have to, we can heave two outside. And of course, hand steering for the most part. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Are you feeling a little, little pressure? <laughs> no. <laughs> we 
we wanted to put up the spinnaker so we furled the screecher and turns out there was like a huge knot in the sock and we tried to get it out we were messing around with it for like an hour Delos totally caught up to us and turns out it's just too tangled to figure out right now so we put the spinnaker away pull the screecher back out and are resigned to just go with the the screecher in the main but we're still making like six seven knots so it's good time like we said before it doesn't really matter if we get there earlier because we're gonna have to wait We met a really nice couple, uh, Jen and Brian Danger, and they're on the boat Karma. Super nice couple. They have the craziest story. They had an indirect lightning strike, which took out a ton of their instruments, and then they got caught in a horrible 60 to 70 knot storm while they were at anchor, and they were dragged onto a reef and just battered, their sail drives got completely broken. And so they're stuck in Roroya waiting on parts. At, but they're super nice. And Jen, she made us these coconut ball, this, uh, bliss balls, which is coconut and dried fruit for our sail today. It's super cute. She's made the bow with a little um, like reed. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna enjoy a bliss ball now and thank you so much, Jen. Mm. Delicious. Yep. With Fabio at the helm, I took some time to enjoy the sail up front. Capturing these moments to share with you all reminds me to be a bit more present and recognize how special these experiences are. Alright, it's time to take Yoda for her evening walk. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like additional content and real-time updates, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. Good girl, very good. You, I'm sure you noticed the lack of a head sail and the flogging mainsail. We lost the wind and it's also whatever wind there was is coming directly behind us. So we just uh, started the engine because we need to be there by two o'clock tomorrow. So yeah, we don't have the luxury of just uh, taking our time. As it set, the sun put on a dazzling show with a light beam shining through a hole in the clouds. Our friends on Mac were off to starboard and Delos was on port and we were all sailing to the same place. It was comforting to have them on the same timeline as it did take some planning to go through the Fakarava Pass at the right time. Good morning everyone. It is 8.37 in the morning and we found the wind this morning. It filled in and Fabio put the sails wing on wing and we're moving at about six knots. The tide, the slack tide is at 2.43 p.m. So we have basically six hours to get there and if we average six knots, we will make it just in time. So we still have on one engine to keep us going because the wind is directly behind us, not exactly the best point of sail, but we're doing the best we can. What's going on, Fab? Well, yesterday we tried to launch the, the spinnaker, but it was totally 
up inside the sock and it would not deploy. But now I have some time and I want to see why it was so entangled. Well, here it is, part of the problem at least, that's somehow we managed to entangle the, the line that pulled the sock down. So I'm going to try to unentangle it. Ah, there's a knot. It's, yeah, it's like some sort of a knotty situation here. How did this happen is beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> so I took this block off here, and now I'm going to try to see if I can somehow figure out what is what. How the hell did this happen? So I'm not sure how that happened, but it was so twisted. I had to untie this, uh, this part of the rope. And then, uh, of course, after that, it was easier to take it apart. But now I have to sew it back. I have a very nice piece of tape right here for my first poke of the day. Uh, this is the line that brings the sock up and is connected to this loop here that goes to that pulley over there, which is attached to the top of the sock. Okay. So it was all twisted. I don't know what happened, uh, but I, in order to untwist it, I had to un untuck, un screw the pulley and untie this loop here. And so, are you doing like all these new stitches? Is yeah, that it? Yeah, okay. yeah. So we basically straighten up the lines and then put back this pulley, this block. We're gonna stick it back in here. As you can see, this was all ripped off previously, so it's kind of like a disgusting job. <laughs> I'm gonna try to see if it goes back in the sock. Hopefully it will. Measuring the temperature on the autopilot, we just used for like a few minutes already, 118 degrees. So I have to pull it down a little bit and then shut it down. For the brief times that we use it, we keep a, a wet cloth on it to keep the temperature down. But it's, uh, see, it's already leaking oil. This sound indicates the rudder is overwhelming the piston and pulling it out. Fortunately, the conditions were overall quite pleasant even if it wasn't the fastest point of sail, and we continued our two-hour shift schedule. All right, guys, we are now just about one hour away from the entrance to Fakarava. We slowed down a bit to time our arrival with the tide. Uh, everything is looking good though. We're definitely excited to arrive, but also, you know, we have to float our anchor chain. We've never done that before. So it should be okay though. Before we knew it, the entrance to the pass was just ahead and we saw Delos go through without a hitch. It seemed we had timed our arrival perfectly and the sea state was quite calm. Not like what we had experienced coming out of Roroya yesterday, but we still had to navigate the entrance to the anchorage, which wasn't exactly clear cut. I think we're going to go through those stakes there. Yeah, in the middle between the... I think... Yeah, it looks like the left and the right. Yeah. So I think those are channel markers yeah. for like starboard and port. Yeah. 
I made sure to keep an eye out up front just in case. I can see stakes in the ground for like marking coral on the yeah. port. Yeah. So I would probably say maybe a bit closer to I can see that is a sandbar. Yeah. So then after we kind of. Yeah, after this mark again, they're close to the other markers there. Yeah. Yeah, I think these are these guys here. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you keep going pretty much the way you're going. Yeah, I'm almost close to here though. Yeah. We made our way through the anchorage eager to drop the hook even though we'd have to float the chain, something we hadn't done before and the wind was blowing 20 knots. Fabio dropped the anchor in what looked to be a patch of sand. We didn't have the bridle on yet so I needed to engage the engine a bit to prevent the chain from pulling on and damaging the windlass, but it was tricky to calculate just how much to move forward with the wind blowing against us. Neutral. We were using fenders to float the chain as we didn't yet have the pearl floats most people use. We'd heard you could find them here washed up on the beach so we didn't bother buying them. After tying a few floats to the chain, Fabio attached the bridle and released just a bit more chain. Then we reversed to ensure the anchor was set. Wanderlust didn't budge when I backed down, but Fabio jumped in the water to check the anchor and chain anyway and confirmed we were all set. After some rest, we were looking forward to exploring the place I had dreamed of visiting for years.